What's up guys, I'm Games. Welcome to Grim Dawn's Act 3 Legendary Loot Run. I'm going to run you through Akovia's Undercity, a little bit of Queen's Hive, to some secret places, and then we're going to go through um, Stone Rin Mine, Fort Heron, Tomb of Korvac, and then Bartholium's Tomb Archon. Alright guys, the build that I'm using is a dual wielding pistol that deals a great amount of fire damage and moderate physical damage. I focused my devotions onto fire damage type abilities and then I have proccing meteor on the two pistols, uh, fissure on mortars and then elemental damage on the mines and then I have behemoth, lion and lizard for life increase and life regen. Alright guys this video is going to basically guide you to all the prime locations in Act 3 that could potentially give you a uh, good chance for a legendary loot. Starting out we're going to go to Twin Falls and then go ahead and make a beeline for the entrance. Keep in mind in this uh, map in the mid portion of the map there is the exit to the surface and then on the northern tip uh, you will find the entrance to the second level. Okay, so if you guys you uh, use this build. The, the tactic is pretty simple. You lay down your mines to slow or halt the enemy's advances, and then the mortars will clean them up a little bit. Uh, it does a ton of damage actually. And then anything that's left alive, you can just shoot them with the pistols. And uh, of course, for the bosses, the pistols are great, especially undead. So we got this boss right here. He's a heroic boss. Now if you're using uh, fire damage and physical damage, he goes down a lot faster. However, if you're using cold damage right now, this guy is very difficult to, uh, to take down. So I laid out my mines, uh, put up my mortars, and he's getting blasted right now. And I'm just gonna go ahead and blast him with my dual pistols. There's like a 2% chance for him to drop legendary loot, and he is part of a quest, so he's gonna spawn every time at that location. Okay, so here we are at the boss's uh, lair. Uh, these spawns, like the gargantuans and then the heroic gargantuans, are, are fairly common when I come to this map. Um, so I think you're going to see them fairly often. Just going to take him down. Uh, he does uh, drop uh, epic loot. Now this boss right here, he does a great deal of poison damage using a poison dart and then he also does uh, fire, lightning and then he does chaos damage. So you want to be uh, resistant to all those damage types. My character actually has 85 in poison, chaos uh, and then all the other stuff I just mentioned. He can drop uh, a grand spoil and then he has the potential for supreme loot unfortunately this time he didn't drop any now okay this next location is the smuggler's pass I like coming here because it's a short run to get to the boss the potential for loot is pretty good these trolls are highly regenerative in terms of health so if you're dealing a lot of damage it's easy to kill them but if you're not 
uh, it could be a pin, but uh, this boss has the potential for grand spoil. He also drops a special maul, a wooden maul, that is used for crafting. Watch out for his ground smash, he can stun you. Alright, next, the rotting cropman. And here, you're basically trying to get to the queen's hive. Look at the map. There's a section uh, to the northwest. There are like four quadrants of cropland, and one of those can spawn the entrance to the queen's hive. Alright, the type of mobs that you're going to be facing are these guys or scarecrows they're really weak against fire as you can see and then you're gonna be fighting insectoids I don't really know what they are they look like a mixed breed of like uh, a crossbreed between ants and lobsters here's the entrance with these mobs the insects um, the Reavers are going to rush you and deal physical damage as well as stun you. So those are the ones you should look out for. As you can see when he hits you, it hurts. Sweet, my devotion level increased so now I'm going to deal a little bit more damage. Okay, make your way to the second entrance which is called the Skittering Den, I want to say. Yeah, okay. Here, there will be a secret entrance, which is a breakable wall that will take you to the Den of the Lost. There, you will encounter a boss that is a grand spoil, and he leaves an exalted chest. This is a really quick and easy run, and I recommend everyone does it if they're trying to, um, you know, they're trying to do Act Three loop run. My other videos. Act 1, Act 2, I think is a little bit quicker. But for those of you who are interested in farming Act 3, this is how you do it. So these creatures are resistant to chaos damage and they themselves deal chaos damage. So have your resistance against chaos up. There's the boss I showed you on the map. They also have a really fast uh, region for their health. But not to worry, I can blast these guys pretty easily. And then you got those little crawlers that deal poison damage, so have your poison up as well. And here's the boss, I'm gonna lay down my traps. And he smacks you for a ton of physical damage, so get ready to kite him. Stay on your toes. I think I end up hitting my mirror. Yeah, I did. Uh, that's okay. You know, it's only like a 25 second cooldown, so you can hit that quite often. It keeps me alive. Okay, there's the chest. Then you just make your way back to the entrance. Now I fight my way to the Queen's Lair, the northernmost portion of this map. Now these guys, they like to swarm, so I like to use like locations like, like this area where I can canalize them and I don't get like surrounded because they hit pretty hard. Now the bosses outside the entrance to the Queen's Lair, they're static spawns. They're part of a quest. So you're gonna see them like every time you come here. Alright, make sure you have your poison resistance up because the Queen does uh, really heavy poison damage. My strategy is to go to the right side first and start clearing that way. Uh, the Queen is right up there and when you get to her She's gonna have guards that spawn regularly. I think they're like sitnos. 
If you focus too much on the Sitnos and not on the Queen herself, you're going to be wasting a lot of time with this fight. So what you want to do is you want to lay down like... I don't know. I have here... Uh, I lay down my mortars and then I throw my mines onto the Queen and it's dealing damage as I'm clearing the spawns. For this first phase, she's actually stuck to the uh, to the abdomen, so she can't move. So you're just trying to avoid the poison damage, as you can see the poison fumes. That does a lot of damage, so be very careful. You can die really quickly if you stand in one spot. Now she's dislodged from her abdomen and she does physical damage. She hits like a truck. I have to kite her just to stay alive. So this boss has the potential for a grand spoil and then if you go to the western portion there's going to be a chest, um, usually a heroic or exalted chest. Okay the blood grove, I'm here because I'm trying to run to Fort Heron which is on the northern portion of this map. So you're going to be facing cultists. Um, you know, they do a lot of ble bleed and vitality type damage. As you can see, these guys don't really stand a chance against fire or damage. Or physical damage for that matter. Now, I like coming to this fort because it's a relatively short run. And then it also has the potential to spawn the, um, the nemesis for this, um, this faction. A very small map here as well. You're gonna stick to the right side of the map or the east side and just clear your way to the boss room which is at the northernmost part of this map. Now this map they do have uh, they drop dynamites so if you're trying to collect dynamites I mean you can come here and do it and it's really a short run. But if you watch my video on how to farm aether crystals and aether shards you don't really need to do this because you can just take those Aether Shards and Aether Crystals and turn them into Dynamites. Okay, here's the location of the first Dynamite. Okay, for this boss, have your uh, Aether and Chaos and then Bleed Resistance up. Um, he does vitality damage as well, I believe. Um, he has potential for Grand Spoil, and he is a static boss, so he's going to be here uh, every time. He's also part of a quest line. My strategy for him is just to range him, and he does magical damage, so he's going to range you as well. And here's the second dynamite. Okay, next you just want to port back to the Blood Grove, and this time you're going to go to the northwestern portion of the map. You're going to be crossing some Aether Fields, and basically that is going to be the location of Stone Ren Mine. Okay, for getting across the Aether field, uh, you don't really need to worry too much for this particular field because it's relatively short near the rest spot. And there, there it is. I'm showing you where the rest spot is. Now, if you need to, you can just quaff a, uh, a health potion. I 
I like coming to this area because well it's a really short run and the loot potential here is pretty good uh, you can also harvest aether crystals aether shards here Okay, for this particular map, uh, make sure you have your Aether Resistance up as high as possible before entering this map. This next boss is the Flesh Hawk. He's gonna basically deal physical damage and it hits for a ton of damage so uh, you want to try to kite him or range him he does do a ground smash which causes a shock wave that can stun you he goes in for a shoulder slam uh, and he's gonna just keep repeating that he has the potential for a grand spoil I've seen him drop legendaries before And then you want to go ahead and go to the northern portion of this map because there's a uh, dynamite there. Alright, here's the next dynamite. Okay, next we're going to go to Dark Veil Gate. Uh, only thing about this one is uh, you're gonna have to basically go to the second level, the entrance on the door of the map, and that's gonna take you to the entrance to the ground level. And that's where the boss is gonna be at. Basically, where the entrance is at to the ground level, he's gonna be waiting for you. It's a static spawn. It's also part of a quest line. Now these guys are going to be, well they're Chitonian so they're going to be dealing um, chaos, lead, vitality damage so for this map you want to have those resistance up. I especially do not like these guys because they can, they can deal a debuff to you that weakens your resistance so much that sometimes you can get one shot if you're not careful. really tedious clearing the trash for this map so I wouldn't hold it against you guys if you decided to just make a, a run for it and just not bother killing anything but for my build I mean it's a range build it has very low health so unfortunately I'm forced to kill all these things before I can get to the entrance of the map for the sake of this video I did cut some of that stuff out and the only thing I show is when I'm fighting like a boss or something. The good thing about the heroic bosses for Chitonians is that they drop uh, Chitonic blood sometimes. So I make it a point to kill all the bosses in the event that they do drop the blood that I need for crafting. Alright, here's the second level and I'm going to try to make my way to the entrance. Now they do drop tonic seals, which is also used for crafting. So if you're trying to farm those items, uh, this is a really good map to come and farm them. I think when I kill a group of these guys, sometimes they drop like four tonic seals. Oh god, this guy, like, he can do a lot of physical damage and he loves these these type of mobs. They'd love to chase you, so... If you don't know, like, how much physical damage they're gonna do to you, I wouldn't recommend, like, standing there and just taking it, because... 
If they crit on you, I mean, that could be a one shot. Alright, here we are at the boss room. Now this guy deals chaos damage, slash bleed damage, and then physical damage. His first form, he's a mage, and he's gonna like run around and throw stuff at you. I take him down pretty easily because I range and I have mortars that do a ton of damage. So he's basically running around getting hammered by like mortars and stepping on mines and he's probably just screaming like ouch 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 the whole time he's running around. And then he transforms into this giant demon. He spawns like these little ads. Uh, like maybe you should be worried about the ads if you were like not ranging, but I'm not. And they step on my mines and they're pretty much dead. Now do you see those things on the ground? They do lead and like vitality damage I think. If you're like not watching that and you're standing in it and you have a really weak resistance, you're you're probably gonna die. He's gonna come in and try to smack you with physical damage. So this guy looks kinda easy with this fire build, but I I've played other builds like an ice build. I mean he's hard to kill if you're just doing physical damage and then ice damage. Okay, for next, we're gonna go to our Astacon Valley, uh, and then we're gonna go to Tomb of Korvac. It's part of a quest line, but I find that farming this area is uh, relatively quick and easy, and the boss has the potential for a pretty good, uh, pretty good loot. And of course, along the way, you kill these cultists that can drop a Chitonic Seal, and then the, the boss sometimes drop like Brain Matter, Ancient Heart. And of course, Teutonic Blood, which are all used for crafting. So why not? You know, like, if they're on the way to your objective anyways, you might as well just kill them. So, like I said, a quick, easy run. There's only one level. You want to get to, like, the northern... Uh, western portion of the map. There's gonna be some like rips, and then uh, the boss is gonna be a ghoul. He's gonna be waiting for the, waiting there for you. These cultists, relatively easy to kill. They are fighting. There you go. You see the tonic seal. I think that's what it's called. But they're fighting against these ghouls. So if you like creep up on them, they're not gonna attack you right away. So, uh, like, you know, if you're one of those dudes that, like, creep up and, like, watch fights, so you pretty much watch them fight, and then you can approach cautiously. So these ghoulings, when they die, they leave a bloody mess, quite literally. If you stand in them long enough, they're gonna cause bleed damage over time. And if enough of them die, it's gonna be a lot of bleed damage, so avoid them. And then, as you fight, I'm fighting the boss, he does a ground slam that can stun you, and he comes in and deals a great deal of physical damage so just be cautious when fighting him he has the potential to drop grand spoils uh, but at the same time um, if you can't take a lot, a lot of physical damage and your health is pretty low I wouldn't recommend this guy okay once again we port back to Astacon Valley Portal I'm gonna run east to that region right there and that's gonna be another boss he's a ice beast obviously he's gonna deal cold damage um, so have your resistance up towards cold I can okay so you're gonna kill these goblin type creatures and uh, just watch out for their champions because they're gonna rush you and they're gonna deal physical damage you want to kill the shamans first because the shamans will heal them so here are the ice beasts. This guy is not a static spawn. Just a heroic. He can drop like ancient hearts and stuff. Uh, like basically crafting ingredients. Okay, now for the boss. This guy is really quick. He does frost damage by breathing on you. And then uh, he does a great deal of physical damage. So if you can't handle that that much physical damage, I wouldn't recommend this guy. He does drop grand spoil and then he does uh, drop ancient heart as well ok 
Okay, so we're going to port back to the Astacon Valley portal. And this time you're going to make your way north to Vadalium's tomb. There's another way to get there, and that's from Econ, or Fort Econ running south. Uh, basically have your Aether resistance up, because you're going to encounter a lot of Aether type uh, features. Now I like taking this rope because basically uh, I feel that it's a lot faster. And then uh, you're going to be fighting these uh, cultists. Uh, so they do they do have the potential to drop tonic seals as well. Okay, once inside you're going to encounter like, you know, my team is the Kaiman's Order and they're fighting against the Necromancer Order. Uh, basically just clear the trash and get to the entrance to the second level as quick as possible. So I just blast my way through the boss. Oh, these guys are pretty much range. That's their strong point. Now they, they deal mainly bleed damage, so you want to have your bleed and chaos resistance up. Here I am at the boss's lair. Okay, so this guy is a skeleton that does cold damage. So you want to have your cold resistance up. He also spawns like ice crystals. Now he's gonna die really quickly because I'm dealing fire damage, but if you're doing cold damage, it's very difficult to take this boss down. He has the potential to drop Grand Spoil, and then he also has a like a one-time chest that spawns uh, north of where he uh, he dies at. Also, this um, sarcophagus can drop um, like legendary. So once you uh, open this chest up, you can make your way back uh, to like the eastern portion of where the boss room is at. And this will take you to a secret entrance to another level. So here, um, you want to get to the shrine because that's where the boss is going to be at. And you're going to be encountering a lot of ghouls. Same kind of ghouls that you encountered before. When they die, they leave behind blood trails or a mist of blood. And if you stand on it, it's going to cause bleed damage. So these ghouls are pretty much gonna mad rush you, and then they're pretty much they're like time bombs. Okay, this boss is gonna do physical damage, and he's gonna do a lot of physical damage. So I'm gonna try to fight him. He does uh, have the potential to drop a grand spoil, and then that's the sarcophagus. Uh, once he dies will be unlocked and you can open it. It's like equivalent to an exalted chest, I believe. And that concludes my video. If you guys enjoyed this, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, my next video is going to be an Act 4 loot run, so stay tuned for that.